This is Talk TV. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this. This, my friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hello. Mild again for this afternoon, but it's also wet again. We've started with the rain across the northwest of the UK, as you can see from the earlier satellite and radar picture. Some pretty heavy downpours, also brisk winds that moved across Scotland and Northern Ireland this morning and now edging further southwards across many northern and western parts of England as well as Wales for this afternoon. Further south and east of that, for central, southern and eastern areas, some bright or sunny spells and staying largely dry as well as mild. Cooler but brighter across Scotland and Northern Ireland and the far north of England later, but there are some showers, pretty hefty ones at that, with the risk of hail and thunder across the north. Then overnight, rain continues across Wales and the West Country, and in fact, another batch of wet weather heads in from the west. The ground is already very sensitive over the southwest of England and Wales, where there's a warning from the Met Office, as there could be some surface water flooding there. And that rain covers much of Ireland, Northern Ireland, England, Wales and southern Scotland by dawn. So very wet start to the day for tomorrow. Windy as well. So some tricky tri driving conditions likely. And then through the morning, that rain quickly clears away eastwards, along with the brisk winds into the afternoon. Drier and brighter conditions will eventually develop from the west. Again, another mild day. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Phelps, every weekday at 4 p.m., only on Talk, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Very good morning to you. It's coming up to two minutes past five o'clock. It's Wednesday, the 21st of February, and this is your early breakfast show here on Talk, where we're on TV, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. We're live from the news building here in London with me, James Max. I'm with you until six o'clock this morning. Later this hour, Becky O'Connor from Pension B. She'll be uh, returning to advise on how you can earn more with digital skills. We'll talk about how you can get discounts on your council tax and mortgage rates are they on the up again we'll find out about that we'll also find out about the nation's favorite sugar hit mm, definitely a piece of pr placement we'll find out about that and also uh, we'll take your calls and you can get involved in reviewing the papers as well but this morning uh, the prince of wales william he's made his strongest intervention yet in the middle east by calling for a permanent peace some praise his words whilst others call the intervention troubling and unwise. What should the role of the royal family be in world events? So very good morning to you. I want to hear from you this morning because the royal family is ever present. Uh, they have a role. They generally uh, open things, they turn up at things, they shine a light on different causes and they tend to avoid difficult situations and they tend to avoid getting involved certainly in any domestic political matters. However, when it comes to uh, matters of whether it's faith or um, cohesion of either our nation or perhaps nations around the world, they do take a role, they do take a stand, they do shine a light on issues and I think it's important that they do because if we want a royal family that's useful as an institution, then although they can't be voted in or out of any kind of power, they do have this soft power that they can exert on matters around the world. And of course, there are situations in which you wish that perhaps they would keep the trap shut or maybe not intervene or get involved. But then there are other occasions where it is important. So, for example, on the day that... Um, the Prince of Wales was talking about anti-Semitism, how it needs to be tackled. He was also talking about um, 
I, I suppose in a very soft way, uh, because the words were chosen carefully, some people uh, approve of the words and some people do not, uh, front page of today's Times newspaper, Prince issues Gaza plea for a permanent peace. The Prince of Wales has made his strongest intervention yet in the Middle East crisis as he undertook uh, the first of two engagements intended to recognise the human suffering in the region. Shortly before William's arrival at the British Red Cross headquarters in London, Kensington Palace released a statement in which he said um, that he remained deeply concerned uh, about the terrible human cost of the conflict um, since the Hamas terrorist attack on October the 7th. Too many uh, have been killed, he added. I, like so many others, want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. There is a desperate need for increased humanitarian support in Gaza. I don't actually think that the words that he used were particularly controversial. I know that some people are trying to read into it that he's stepping into dangerous territory, uh, that he shouldn't get involved. I don't think he's getting involved in that political conversation that the left and the right would like him to have in terms of either unwavering support for Israel or indeed um, uh, the call, the dramatic call that uh, those on the left would like to see through an immediate ceasefire. Because I think one has to understand what's happening in the region in order to understand Hamas, a terrorist organisation, uh, needs to be defeated in order for pay peace to be achieved, in my view. But I do think that there is a role for the royal family, whether it's on green issues or anything else, to step in and to bring cohesion to our nation, to apply soft power internationally. But that's my views. I want to know what yours are. I want to know what you think the role of the royal family should be in world events. 0344 499 1000. Should they ever give their opinion? Should they ever press for activ activity? Should they ever shine a light either on things that the government does or does not do on issues that are of national and international significance? Because I think if they don't, if they don't have a voice, if they don't have a point of view, which can be apolitical, by the way, I don't want to see the royal family become political. Although, interestingly, the fact that the Prince of Wales chooses to send his child uh, or uh, the Prince and Princess of Wales choose to send their child to a fee-paying school is inherently political. And so even by not saying anything, they are making a political statement that they support uh, the fee-paying school system. And in my view, so be it. It's their choice, and so it should be. And no, there shouldn't be VAT on school fees, in my view. And no, I don't think we should politicise the school system and make decisions based on where you went to school as to whether you should or should not have a position uh, because you had either a fee-paying education or not. But we do in this nation, by the way. And it is intensely political. And so is uh, the position on uh, what happens in the Middle East. But I do think it's also important that the royal family take a very strong view when it comes to anti-Semitism, racism, sexism, uh, all those isms. And I think that they have a role to play in that. I also think they have a role to play when it comes to uh, the nation protecting its assets for the nation. I think they have a role to play on the international stage because, like it or not, when the royal family turn up, so do other people. And I think that provides an enormous amount of soft power around the world and we should use that soft power. But I'd like to know from you, what do you think the role of the royal family is in world events? Should they never say anything, never be involved, never raise their head above the parapet? Or do you applaud um, William for having done so? Richard Kay, by the way, in the Daily Mail, does not agree uh, with the intervention, thinks it's a bit cack-handed. There are others who think that it's troubling and unwise for him to get involved. My view is that if he wants to say something, let him say it. Just because uh, he's an unelected head of state, does it mean that he should never have a voice on anything that matters to him? I think he should if he wants to. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. That's the telephone number. Let's go to Kevin, who is in Basingstoke. Kevin, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, what should the role of the royal family be in world events? Well, I'm a republic Republican, so I'd, I'd like to see them abolished, but. Um... What, do you think our nation would be better if they were abolished? Yes, personally. I what, mean, they, why? Well, because of uh, because of the class system. Do you think that the class system would ever be removed? Well, I mean, it would help if we didn't have some a, a family at the top that uh, was supposedly better than us. 
And I mean, the, the amount of money that we give to them, I don't agree with that either. I mean, we don't give them any money, the richest, Kevin. They're one of the richest families on the planet, and we give them hundreds of millions of pounds every year. We don't give them any money, Kevin. What do you mean we don't give them any money? Well, in in what sense do we give them money? Well, I mean, we give them hundreds of millions of pounds a year to support their support that family. Uh, mm. It's, it's not quite like that. I mean, the, the settlement is that in order to give the money that is used to run the royal household, and that has, uh, through, for example, the security, the pomp, the ceremony, which does attract thousands, if not millions of people to the United Kingdom to come and visit. So it probably pays for itself anyway. But that money comes from a settlement that was made on, on the basis that they handed over land and property that they owned, uh, that created uh, the royal settlement. So, for example, the Crown Estate isn't the, the king or the queen's um, property. It's owned by the government. It creates an income of which a percentage of that income is used to run the royal household. Their own separate private wealth is their own separate private wealth. Yeah, but what they own... It's not yours. I don't, what they own, you know... Uh, I don't believe that they should have anyway. It's not... I mean... You can't take people's... You can't take people... You can't take How people's uh, property away money. just because you don't like it. it. Did they? Sorry? They didn't work for what they've got. They just took it. Well, they didn't just take it. Do you, have you studied did. history, Kevin? Well, not as much as you know, but I've still no. got an opinion on it. And yeah, I, I know. I know. It doesn't... It doesn't be, everybody has an opinion on everything, Kevin. It doesn't mean that necessarily you have any knowledge of it. I mean, I'm just well, trying to work out... Here's, here's the point. I, I understand that it is... Um, on paper, you probably wouldn't write a system where somebody is born into a position of privilege or power. That having been said, the royal family, in my view, I don't think that anybody would want that job because of the pressures and uh, the difficulties that it brings. There are a lot of things that they do that draw attention to issues that make our nation a better place. Somebody has to do it. And I'd rather have somebody who's kind of almost cajoled into doing it and, and trained for the job on the basis that um, if you suddenly have to be elected, and I know that it sounds like a good idea to be elected to something, but rarely do we have people who are elected to power who are suited for that power. Well, if, if they didn't want to do that job, they wouldn't. And that thing you said about tourism, I, I mean, tourists, if we didn't have a royal family, tourists would still come here, the buildings would still be there, the history would still be there, the buildings could be open all year round. We could walk around the buildings instead of just, uh, you know, a, a tiny amount of uh, rooms. And I, 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 I agree that those buildings could be used more effectively, but the thing is that, say, for example, on something like Buckingham Palace, which is used for state events and, and various other things, it is opened up at certain times, um, and, and you can go and have a look around certain state rooms or otherwise. But those, uh, say, for example, we've got an enormous amount of government buildings and uh, official residences. I mean, for example, is it wrong that the Prime Minister has an official residence or the Foreign Secretary has an official residence that is never open to the public, has huge amounts of room costs millions of pounds to look after. Whichever kind of system you have for people in power, it is always going to cost the state, you, me, us, the taxpayer, it's always going to cost us significant money. And in fact, I would say that the royal family gives us a huge amount of revenue uh, because it creates interest. So the fact that the royal family do things and they are a living beast, otherwise it becomes almost locked in aspic and becomes uh, less and less relevant and less... Uh, we have less ability to create that. So, say, for example, if we got rid of the royal family today, tomorrow, um, you know, the only person you can send to a foreign nation is the prime minister, and that's not going to create as much interest or excitement as a member of the royal family. Well, what you said about, um, you know, they create a lot of money. Do, do you know, if, when there's a bank holiday for a royal wedding or, or a death or or um, a coronation, that costs the economy £1.6 billion. Pounds. But that's not right, Kevin, because you're not including all the things that it creates in terms of either the ongoing tourism or the worldwide uh, coverage. So say, for example, do, are you not putting a value on... If there is a royal wedding and there is global interest, the amount of... Um, 
business that that creates as a result of Britain, uh, its assets, its pomp, its ceremony, its circumstance, its, um, its, its buildings, um, the environment being on those screens around the world creates an enormous amount of tourism that we will get back in buckets when people come to visit. So it pays for itself, Kevin. Well, I know it's an inconvenient tourism, truth for you. The tourism in this country is worth 120 billion. The Roy, um, supposedly, tourism, because of the royal family, uh, creates uh, 500 million. That's rubbish. Half a billion pounds. You've just made so that up, like, Kevin. No, I didn't. It's, on the, it's, on, uh, it's on the Republican website. Yeah, exactly. Made up. No, it's not made up. There are so many it's aspects that I, I think that if you wanted to do the maths and you can you can carve it up in any way you like, Kevin, if you wanted to do the maths, first of all, I think there are two things. First of all, I think the royal family probably pays for itself in terms of how and, and what we do and what we create. The second point is, what do you replace it with? Are you going to tell me that we're not going to have a president, that we're not going to have a leader of state? Because if you have a leader of state, then all the things that are currently within the royal family, you would still have to have in terms of residences, in terms of security, in terms of... Um, um, the infrastructure required, all of that stuff. So it, it's a nonsense. It's it's a fake story to come up with this notion. And and I'd much rather have people who are almost born into the role on the basis that nobody actually wants to do it. It would be horrendous, Kevin. I don't want to be head of state. It'd be awful. Why not? Why wouldn't you want to be a head of state? I mean, if you... Only people that wanted to be head of state would put themselves forward. Yeah, because then, if we then, if we didn't then like, you end if up we with people like who are them, totally unsuitable for that role, Kevin. Look around the world. Yeah, we're, we're, if they're not suitable, we just select them. We're just, um, you're, you're making it out as if, a, as if know, we the people would have an amazing... Five years. Yeah, you, you, you make it out, Kevin, that we the people would have the most amazing ability to be able to select who we want and we'd end up with somebody like Joanna Lumley as our, you know, head of state and wouldn't it be wonderful and wouldn't that be amazing? It's a nonsense, you know, national treasures. Um, you know... <laughs> you know you have to you have to be a national treasure before you can stand. Really, really, and then, and then you tell, telling me that we wouldn't have to have all the as soon as you have a head of state, you have all the pomp, the ceremony, and and the expense going along with it. So if you think that by somehow removing the royal family is going to remove that expense, it's it's a complete and utter fallacy. And in fact, the royal fact. Well, you, you can think what you think, but I, 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 I. I I think that the majority of people in this country still believe that the royal family is an institution well, yeah, in which we should support. Well, yeah, there's so much support. propaganda about it. Well, it's not that there's propaganda. It's just that I think that they do a, they do more good than bad. Well, yeah, because that's what yeah, because that's what um, uh, the media they only they only highlight the good things. Are you they're, telling they're Are you telling me that I'm told what there. to say, Kevin? Well, I mean. No, I'm not. And are you no, telling me that I always praise employed, everything that the royal family do and I've never been critical? No, because you're employed, because your employer knows your views. I'm employed because my employer knows my views. Yeah, most people, most, uh, most journalists are for the royal family. You hardly ever hear... Am I a journalist, time, Kevin? Well, present them then. Um, nobody asked me, before I was employed here... James, what are your views on X, Y, Z? Nobody. And nobody has got in touch with me and said, you must say this, you must say that, this must be your view. Nobody. Well, most, most uh, presenters on your uh, channel are right-wing. Hardly any left-wing uh, uh, presenters, are there? And, you know, uh, and what, are, what are my views, Kevin? Well... I didn't say you personally, I said... Well, then there you go, you see. The problem is that you're painting everybody with the same brush, which inevitably leads to the wrong conclusion. Anyway, come back to the royal family. Since you think that they should all be abolished, I'm assuming that they don't think that you don't think they should play any uh, any place in world events. Oh, no. Uh, well, if they, I would abolish them. But we have got a royal family, so if they've got a voice, I think they should be able to use it. Okay. I mean, the Queen, what did the Queen say? She was a blank canvas. The only, the only thing you knew about the Queen is a uh, uh, speech at Christmas, and that was it. I don't know what she thought about anything. 
But do you not agree that um, arguably she was the most famous woman in the world? Arguably, she uh, managed to do a whole range of things behind the scenes of benefit to this nation. And the soft power that she wielded when she did uh, go abroad and did um, uh, get deployed on various different matters, perhaps on the government's behest, um, she, she did an incredible job, wouldn't you agree? No, I wouldn't. There's 160 laws that we have to uh, live by that the royal family have opted out of because it doesn't benefit them. Um, give me one example. Uh, if you work for the royal family and you're discriminated against because you're uh, from an ethnic minority, uh, you've got no protect protection. So are you telling me that uh, discrimination takes place in the royal family? Well, I mean, that's... I mean, if you don't want... If you don't want to... Uh, abide by a law that's supposed to protect minorities, then probably yes. Don't well, you, you, you speak to anybody who's worked for the royal household and I think you'll find that the uh, the actuality is very different. Kevin, pick a newspaper for me. Uh, the Times. Uh, and a number between 1 and 62, please. Uh, four. Four. High-fat diet that mimics fasting can make you biologically younger. Spending five days a month on a diet that mimics the effect of fasting without needing to starve yourself can reduce your biological age by two and a half years and reduce the risk of diabetes, according to a study. All right, are you going to try it? Oh, cheers. <laughs> oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand. Uh, funny enough, Kevin's views have uh, stimulated you on the WhatsApp, which you can send me a message, oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand, or you can give me a call. 0344 499 1000. Uh, what should the role of the royal family be in world events? And uh, some of the comments that you've made about Kevin and his views on the royal family, oh, they're explosive. And they're coming up next here on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and you're on your smart speaking. The British fish industry has been hit by a perfect storm of problems. First, the pandemic, then Brexit, and now the economic recession. A woman can become a man, and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. David Cameron needs to worry about his own country, and frankly, he can kiss my ass. It's boom, fantastic. We need a bit more of that in the UK. Well, she's she's saying what a lot of people think. Not if you can't then... call Hamas terrorists, I can't talk to you. Cut the interview. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. No. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of the street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Our only way out of the theater was through the stage. Right. Uh, so we actually had to, to pass right next to him, right in front of him. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he tried to get the entire crowd to chant with him, ceasefire now and free Palestine. Right. But you managed to get out, and you must have been shocked. If we had lingered for over a minute, right. I think it would have come to physical violence. You've been having to fight again for compensation after having to fight to be believed, then fight to get your conviction quashed, to get what's rightfully yours. If Archetypes was as successful as they claim, why is Spotify willing to hand that over to Limonada to do whatever they want with it? What do you do? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> It may be that it's a more serious problem at the BBC than just her. I'm problem. giving her some objectivity because I think you've got to look at someone. Why are you well, going okay. up for? This is the plank of the week, Michael. Will. <laughs> bloody therapy session. <laughs> Nobody is, is spending any money. They're not prepared to do it. I mean, why is that? Uh, quite simple. The downturn in the spend is three simple words, financial fair play. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? Ed Balls and, and George Osborne were asked, would you tell your kids to go into politics? And they both said no, no. because it's so nasty now, it's scary. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they would be safe. Do not come <laughs> to the UK. All you will get is free accommodation, warmth, <laughs> food, education, health service. It's just not worth it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>
Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Five twenty-three is the time, and we're having a right old royal row this morning. Uh, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us here on Talk TV. Much appreciated. Now, what should the role of the royal family be in world events? Why? Because the front page of the Times, but also many of your newspapers this morning, Prince issues Gaza plea for a permanent peace. I actually think what William has done is quite skilful because he has demonstrated that there is a view that. Um, Achieving world peace, achieving uh, a long-term peace is a goal without necessarily dealing with the difficulties of Hamas, a terrorist organisation, the fact that uh, Israel is taking its action against Hamas. And frankly, uh, the conflict in the Middle East could be stopped tomorrow if Hamas... And, and I don't know why no commentators seem to make this point. If Hamas surrendered, it is a terrorist organisation. If they surrendered and stopped firing rockets and stopped using people as human shields, this could end tomorrow. It could have ended yesterday. It could have ended right at the beginning. If Hamas had not taken the view to slaughter people on October the 7th, this never would have happened. So, you know, history, history, history. But here we are. We have uh, William making a statement. Um, the chief rabbi has praised William's words, but uh, former ministers call the intervention troubling and unwise. Well, maybe they do, because perhaps they haven't taken the right stance. Having said that, I think uh, he will have made his comments with full knowledge of um, uh, the government being informed of what he was going to say and probably uh, having uh, their input. But I want to know from you, what should the role of the royal family be in world events? Now, we were chatting to Kevin, who's um, had quite a lot of incoming on the socials. Steve says, Kevin hasn't got a clue. It costs less than £2 a year per person to keep the royals. He needs a maths lesson, says Steve in witness. Uh, look, James, if it says uh, on the Republic website, it must be true. Plank of the week contender, Kevin from Basingstoke. I'll send that over to Mr Graham. Um... Morning, James. Kevin is like Wolfie Smith. I was surprised that he didn't shout, Power to the people, says Dino. Um, well done, James, for sorting Kevin out. How you didn't lose your temper, I don't know. I d Listen, I regularly uh, have to deal with all sorts of nonsense on this programme. Uh, losing temper doesn't necessarily help having a conversation, because the other thing is that even if I did lose my temper, even if I was exasperated... Um, it doesn't. I, I'm not here to change your views. I'm not here to uh, tell you what to think, but to have a conversation where hopefully uh, we get to the bottom of something. What should the royal family uh, do in world events? What should their role be is what I'm asking this morning. 0344 499 uh, Linda's in London. Hello, Linda. Oh, hello. 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 Um, I think that firstly... I don't know where Kevin was getting hit. Was it Kevin? Yes, he was, he was getting, getting his um, uh, facts from the Republic website, which is uh, driven by a particular narrative. Yeah. Yes, well, it's not the full quick, facts. A very quick Google search shows several reliable, what I would consider reliable sources, saying that the royal family cost about £500 million a year, but bring in £2.5 billion just based on their brand. And people are forgetting also the Prince of Wales charities alone bring in over £100 million for charity. Yeah, and I think that, say, for example, if you have a look at, um, I think it's presumably now the King's Trust, but it was the, formerly the Prince's Trust, the amount of... No, it's still the Prince's Trust has been taken over by William. OK, well, I think there's two aspects, because I think the King is also doing various other things ah. uh, as well. But the thing is that they do have a tremendous ability to support charity and charities. They do have a tremendous ability to lend their support. I mean, if I, if I have a look at the institutions in which I'm involved and you have a royal patron... If that royal patron turns up to something, mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference in terms of the publicity you receive, in terms of the support you gain, uh, and also because of the way that the royal family and the institution works, they do a huge amount of work behind the scenes to ensure that funds and money and causes that they support are going to be governed and have proper and due governance to ensure that we feel comfortable with them. Because, say, for example... You know, the, the alternative where people say, oh, you know, it's power to the people. The people who get to the top, there is, you know, little, if any, um, track record of the people who you would have instead of, of being 
either any better or having more integrity. And generally, they well, have less and they're worse. We could end up with a Donald Trump. I mean, you know... So we could end I up with a Joe Biden. Well, well, well that's true. That's we could yeah, end up with Emmanuel Macron. That's true. And I just think also, the other thing is, I think sometimes the royal family are kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't. And, um, you know, there's been times where, you know, people have said, why haven't the royal family spoken out about this? Why haven't they said anything? And then when they do, there's people criticising them. And I just think, yes, he's the Prince of Wales, but he's also a citizen. And, the you know, the whole basis of this country is that we have freedom of speech and freedom of expression. But what are we saying? Only some people have freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Now, I understand there's limitations. But I think, I think, I think we've also... But, Linda, happen. we've also had a royal family that has kept out, largely speaking. They've kept mm. out of domestic politics, and so they should. Um, which is also a very tight line and a difficult line to tread. But I, th mm. I think you're absolutely right. I think, uh, in some respects, damned if, if you do and damned if you don't is, is mm. probably the right point. I would say, on, on this instance, I think William has to carve out a role for himself whilst he is in line to the throne in order to uh, allow us to s either support or indeed get behind the things that he wants to champion. Mm. I, I think that he has an enormous role to play both here in the country and uh, around. And I think mm. he also has a job of reinventing the royal family so that it is fit for purpose. I don't think it should be stuck in aspect. I don't think it should be, you know, some kind of historic relic. I think that there is a role of leadership and galvanising our, our, our people, our population, our culture, our, um, you know, our our sort of nation standing, if you like, in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and like it or not, I would much rather have a royal family where somebody is, you know, on paper it looks terrible to be born into a role, but actually I think it provides us and, and serves us, the people, really well. But many people are born into privilege. You know, you, you could say that, you know, some people um, that are born, you know, with parents who are very wealthy and very well connected, you know, they're born into privilege. But it yeah. doesn't mean that they somehow are diminished and that they can't say what they want. And I just think the Prince's Trust particularly, they just do incredible work. My niece couldn't leave the house. She was crippled with anxiety. She had a very diminished life. She was supported by the Prince's Trust. She went on several courses with them. She's now at university and flourishing. So I think, mm. you know, just the work they do with charities alone... Well, exactly. I mean, look at, look at, for example, uh, look at the Duke of Edinburgh Awards that, yeah. um, you know, were started by the, the Duke of Edinburgh at the time. I know a lot of people who have gone and, and done those um, endeavours and awards and w their lives have been hugely enriched as a result of doing these things. You know, something which is altruistic, something which is perhaps takes you out of your comfort zone, uh, is tremendously helpful and society needs those sorts of things. And I don't mind whether it comes from spiritual leaders, church leaders, mm -hmm. um, faith leaders, um, people in, in, uh, who lead charities uh, or people who simply, uh, you know, have good ideas mm -hmm. and, and want to take things forward. I mean, I do a lot of things where I give up my time to uh, take part in, you know, various activities that galvanise our community. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, but I would hope that, you know, provide some good. It gives... It gives purpose to life, Linda. Absolutely. And I just think, again, if we abolish the royal family, who's going to take up those roles? We would, be a, you know, we would be a poorer nation. I don't mean in financial terms, although we probably would be. But I think yeah. we would be a poorer nation if we got rid of another strand, if you like, of our, of our Britishness. OK, pick it. That's good point. Well made, Linda. Thank you for that. Uh, which newspaper would you like this morning? Let's go with The Times, page nine. Mm. Times is very popular today. Oh. Yeah, that's the second time it's been selected. Um, oh. Uh, oh, now this is a good story. All you need is four new Beatles films. Sir Sam Mendes will test the public's seemingly insatiable appetite for the Beatles with four, not one, but four films dramatising the life of each member of the band. The director announced that he had obtained permission from Sir Paul McCartney, Sir Ringo Starr and the families of John Lennon and George Harrison to make the feature-length films which will be released in 2027. Sony, which has promised uh, a full cinema release, has not said whether they'll be shown as a quadruple bill or individually. No casting decisions have been announced yet, but I think this is quite exciting. I, I think this is an amazing project. 
yay. Ugh. What? I don't know. I'd, yay, I guess. I don't, yeah. It's the most amazing story. The Beatles, one of the greatest pop bands of all time. And hearing the individual stories as to how each individual won. I mean, sometimes we look at them as a foursome, but each individual member of the Beatles, hugely talented in their own right, an incredible backstory in terms of their life, how it has impacted, uh, the levels of fame, which has probably been replicated half a dozen times since, um, you know, the worldwide touring and um, groundbreaking, you know, the first pop band. To... You're, you're, a, you're a bit of a fanboy, aren't you, James? How can you not be? They're incredible. It's, the music's well, I mean, incredible. The story's I like, incredible. I like yesterday, I like, you know, some of the stuff. But, I, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll possibly watch it, but, yeah. How can you be so uninspired about the Beatles? Well, how could you be so inspired by them? Because the music's incredible, the story's incredible, they're incredible. But the music of lots of people is incredible. Not like the Beatles. In your opinion? No, it's, that's fact. OK. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, I, I think the, the life of Harry Styles, having 8,000 cards sent to you in a month by some lunatic who's been sent off to prison, I mean, that's an interesting story too. I think Harry Styles is amazing, but he wasn't the first... You know, the, the first incredible worldwide fandom is probably at the Beatles' feet. I mean, you know, other... I mean, for example, I, I'm not a particular Elvis fan, but I think the Elvis movie was an incredible insight into the extraordinary life of an individual who's, whose life was turned upside down by worldwide fame. I mean, why wouldn't you want to know about that stuff. I really hope you enjoy the films, James. Bore off. <laughs> OK, bye. <laughs> oh, oh, you've got some support, though, Linda. OK. Beatles says this one, most overrated band ever. I don't rest my case. How dare you? I dare, they're amazing. And as for George Harrison, what an incredible back, back, back catalogue he had of wonderful music that he wrote. All right, well, if you think differently, you think differently. Thank you, Linda. 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Uh, get involved in the conversation. Malcolm's in Cardiff. Hello, Malcolm. Hello there, how are you, Jim? I, I'm very well, but I'm slightly upset that Linda was so dismissive about the Beatles. Oh, I couldn't care less about the Beatles in the past as far as an oldies pension is concerned. Uh, What's wrong with you this morning? Did you get her out of bed the wrong side? No, but it's, it's irrelevant, like the royal family. They're irrelevant to the average member of the community when we're facing council tax rises and the system collapsing around us. What the hell are they interfering with overseas things for? Because... Because we have a world on, the, we have a role on the world stage, Malcolm, and they're brilliant for doing that. Do we? Yes. Really? This little island, this little island is going bust. Well, it's not going bust, but we are the sixth or seventh richest nation in the world, so don't we have a responsibility to do things uh, beyond our shores? Well, that's the days of the old Commonwealth, and all. They're, they're coming to an end fairly quick now, aren't they? Oh, dear. So do you, you, you think that we should just um, turn over the page, go, that's all history, we should never have an influence? I mean, in terms of our influence, whether... I mean, for example, you say, oh, Beatles, doesn't matter. That's a worldwide export. It's... Um, it's influenced the world popular culture. Um, they uh, drew crowds from uh, wherever they went. Uh, their music still sells in, in the gazillions and people listen to it and stream it. Uh, it, it has a huge influence on, on popular culture around the world. Uh, and it's a huge revenue earner. I mean, our, uh, the revenue that we as a nation earn from our uh, international exports of uh, movies, of uh, entertainment, of the influence that it has on culture, it's incredible, Malcolm. How can you be so dismissive? Well, I'm a realist, I suppose. No, I think you just... I think you're glass half empty, Malcolm. Do you think so? Yes. Well, that's, as you keep saying, it's your opinion, it's your opinion. You've told us that several times this morning. That's your opinion. Do you, think, do you think I'm opinion. wrong? No, totally. I mean, what, what relevance are all these lords and ladies and royal family and hangers-on? What use are they really to the average family trying to raise his family? Average family man trying to raise his family at this present time. Well, what you could you could say all? that about you could say that about human existence. I mean, you know, what's the what what is what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything, Malcolm? Oh yeah, well we've got to question these things, and I think it's about time we put more question into the royal family. Sorry to be against you, James. No, 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 it's fine. You, 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 that's that. That is your that is your prerogative, Malcolm. So, okay, what would you replace the royal family with? 
Well, we've only got to look across the Irish Sea. They've got a president here. That man, that, that seems to work well. And you say that, but then see, the president of Ireland turns up in, I don't know, anywhere in the world, nobody cares. The king, the queen, the prince of Wales turns up, uh, crowds will turn up, the world's press will turn up, uh, and it puts Britain on the map. So you choose. I, I would rather have the royal family that gets worldwide attention than um, somebody who nobody knows who the heck they are or cares. Now, James, you see when the royal family visits an area, what do they do? They give all the kids little red, little Union Jack flags, put them, give them a day off school, go outside and wave your flags. Fantastic. Look out, in, look, out, look out the crowds are going down. There's nobody there except kids from school. When they get in, in a local authority in my area, they had to turn the people at the county hall because there was nobody to see the bloody Queen. Well, that's your fault. I would have no, turned up to see the fault. Queen. Uh, that's a fact. Well, I do... I, but the thing is, you, you talk about what replaces it. I mean, do you really want to have a, a you know some weird republic system uh, where you end up with presidents and presidential families like you do in the US? Well, um, perhaps so. I don't know. You asked me about the royal family. I don't think they're relevant. But I... Well... I, I would say that they're relevant to the extent that, first of all, we're talking about them, so they must be relevant, and secondly, um, you, you send them somewhere, they end up on the front pages of papers. You know, when, when the Queen died, that made news, front page news, every single country in the world, pretty much, other than possibly North Korea. What is there any relevance to the average family in this country? Yes, they have a relevance no. in every way. Are you telling me that um, things like, for example, what about the Duke of Edinburgh scheme where uh, children from up and down the country take part and, and push themselves and get involved in endeavours that may have charitable uh, activity or galvanise or give them own personal skills? Are you telling me that, that that isn't a positive effect up and down the country? I'm of an age I could have gone. It didn't do me any good. I, didn't, I never went. I've managed in well, life. That's because you didn't it. do it. If you had done, you might have yeah, been a did, slightly I, more positive person, Malcolm. Oh, I'm very positive. I well, you're I'm not this morning. You're grumpy. I'm not grumpy, I'm just stating what I believe. Oh. I don't, I, I'm disappointed. Are. I'm disappointed that you don't want a royal family and don't want the heritage of something like the Beatles. Well, I who's your, who's your pop hero, then? Well, the Beatles don't cost me anything at the moment. It's the royal family that costs me my taxes. We've got bloody council tax rises, it's fantastic. Ah, bah, 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 bah. It doesn't cost if you anything, Malcolm. OK, if I could prove to you... Like if I could prove to you to, that the royal family paid for themselves, would you be less grumpy about them? I, I don't believe that. Look at all the, look at all the, our so-called troops to the guard and um, oh, all these ceremonial things. They're all costing the country a fortune. Yes, are you telling me that we don't get that money back in spades when people come and visit because they no want to see the bomb? Way do we, no way do we get that back. Of course you no do. Way. Listen, if they wanted to see the Queen, go to Madame Tussauds. She's there. What, 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 or Prince Ch whatever. Well, and give, the, give, the money to the, give the money to the company that owns Madame Tussauds as opposed to putting it back in your or my pocket. No, thanks. It doesn't go back in my pocket. It might go back into yours, but it doesn't into mine. Who, who pays for your street lights and your roads and your rails and your infrastructure, Malcolm? Council tax. Well, the council tax pays virtually, virtually nothing towards that. That's the problem with council tax. We think it's a lot of money, and it is, uh, but in terms of what that actually pays for, um, the services that we have, we have little understanding in this nation as to how much things actually cost. When it comes to building roads, rails, bridges, when it comes to the infrastructure that we have, when it comes to even, you know, just collecting and emptying the bins. I know we might complain about it, but compared to other countries in the world, we have it pretty good, Malcolm. Oh, that's... You're, you're, perhaps you're in a privileged position. Perhaps your salary is fantastic. I don't know what you... I wish it was, is. Malcolm. Well, it's, it's more than the average person in, in this country. Be honest now. Yeah, sure. It's not enough, Malcolm. I can tell you that, uh, and I and I and I will tell you that uh, the impact of the cost of living uh, rise and and you know if I told you that I'm on the same money here that I was on six years ago, um, you know I haven't had pay rises. There are all sorts of difficulties that you know one has to deal with. You know, it's not uh, it's not all you know huge uh, you know rose petals being thrown at my feet. Well, I, I would suggest you're getting a lot more than the average person. So? Best of luck to you. Best of luck to you. Right? Yeah, and I, and I pay my taxes too, Malcolm. And I can, I can assure you that I, I would much rather that my tax went into well, paying for things like the royal family than it goes into paying and lying uh, politicians' pockets who sit around and do nothing. I would rather go back into people's pockets so they can decide they want to spend Why it Why should on. I give I my don't... money to other people, Malcolm? 
Jim, my name's Robert Peter. I, I don't quite get that, James. What do you mean by so, that? So where does my tax go? You said that you wanted to put money in, in ordinary people's pockets. Where does that money come from? So if I'm earning it, and 50% or whatever, 45% of everything that I earn, and by the time I pay VAT and, and uh, insurance tax and tax on any fuel or whatever it may be, oh. uh, all of that money goes back into the coffers and it, it's lining other people's pockets. Why should people sit around on benefits and I'm having to wake up at 12 minutes past three to go to work to pay my tax to stick in somebody else's pocket? Why should I do that? I, I, I don't think I said you should do that. We got to sort out the system. We got to sort out the social yeah. security system. Yeah, you know which is which is which is paying for things that people don't pay for themselves. Now, I take the view that actually paying tax is a good thing. Because it means well, well, that we well, have well. a we we have a galvanised society that means that those who are less able to look after themselves are looked after either by the state or by institutions, and and like you, I despair when those institutions don't work. But I also think that society is bonded and binded by collective uh, leadership from people, and sometimes. Saying that, you know, uh, everything should be elected and everybody should be accountable and everybody should, you know, have the same. I, I don't believe in that because, you know, we're all different and we have different, uh, you know, sometimes it's fortunate, sometimes it's unfortunate. But as a society, different people do different things. And I think that that's how society works. Do you want to support the poll tax then? I think the poll tax was a flawed tax, but I also think council tax is a flawed tax. I think, Which dare I say, um, some kind of, you know, when you have income tax, at least the more you earn, the more you pay. Um, but I, I really dislike the complexity of our tax system, and I dislike the ability to be able to obfuscate and avoid paying tax. Well, what about the five million? Is it five million that are economically inactive in this country? How can you be economically inactive unless somebody's supporting you? Well, exactly. And the, and the thing is that if somebody is economically inactive because they genuinely cannot work, then I'm all up for society supporting no, them. No, but if people are making it an active they choice because work. they're going to be better off on benefits than they are working, then I would say get off your backside and go and earn your, earn your crust. Oh, I would agree with you there. There we go. We have agreement. Malcolm, what newspaper would you like? Uh, I'll have the mail. Hang on that second. Uh, we'll come back to Malcolm and the mail in a moment here on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. The British fish industry has been hit by a perfect storm of problems. First, the pandemic, then Brexit, and now the economic recession. A woman can become a man, and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. David Cameron needs to worry about his own country, and frankly, he can kiss my ass. If Boom, fantastic. We need a bit more of that in the UK. Well, she's she's saying what a lot of people think. Not if you can't then... call Hamas terrorists, I can't talk to you. Cut the interview. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. Yeah. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Our only way out of the theater was through the stage. Right. Uh, so we actually had to, to pass right next to him, right in front of him. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he tried to get the entire crowd to chant with him, cease fire now and free Palestine. Right. But you managed to get out, and you must have been shocked. If we had lingered for over a minute, right. I think it would have come to physical violence. You've been having to fight again for compensation after having to fight to be believed, then fight to get your conviction quashed, to get what's rightfully yours. If Archetypes was as successful as they claim, why is Spotify willing to hand that over to Limonada to do whatever they want with it? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, is it? <laughs> It may be that it's a more serious problem at the BBC than just her. I'm problem. giving her some objectivity because I think you've got to look at someone. Why are you well, okay. that for? This is plank of the week, Mike. Will. <laughs> bloody therapy session. <laughs> Nobody is, is spending any money. They're not prepared to do it. I mean, why is that? Uh, quite simple. The downturn in the spend is three simple words, financial fair play. 
creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? Ed Balls and, and George Osborne were asked, would you tell your kids to go into politics? And they both said no, right. because it's so nasty now, it's scary. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they would be safe. Do not come <laughs> to the UK. All you will get is free accommodation, warmth, <laughs> food, education, yeah. health service. It's just not worth it. <laughs> That's it. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five forty nine is the time. I was talking to Malcolm about the papers. Um, so, uh, Malcolm, yes, uh, yes, hello. Uh, what pe what newspaper did you say that you wanted? The Mail. Right here it is. A number between one and seventy two, please. Oh, I, I forgot what it said. Say it's ten. Ten. All right. Uh, let's have a look at page ten of the Mail. Um, oh, uh, Post Office Chiefs Kemi claims are a total mess. The former Post Office Chairman's allegations against Kemi Badenoch were branded a total mess by government sources last night. Henry Staunton sparked a row with the Business Secretary by claiming she told him he was being sat because someone's got to take the rap for Horizon IT scandal. So there you go. That's in the papers. Uh, Malcolm, you've there's a lot of incoming. Um, Andy yeah. and Swansea says, why is it that you attract the grumpy and uneducated to your show? 80% of all the people you talk to on your show are negative ninnies. Fine, that's his opinion. Meanwhile, Den says, another topic for you, James. Why do we run our country down? Other countries celebrate their history, but not us. Mm, Oh, there we go. Uh, Malcolm, thank you very much indeed for calling. Meanwhile, uh, the royal family are a waste of space and a waste of money. Abolition now. You should have a look at the spelling here. I think Wendy needs to go back and have some uh, some spelling lessons. And, and, that, and that's with spell checker. Demolish their palaces and castles and build social housing. Wendy, go and live in North Korea. That's my suggestion to you. Meanwhile, the cheer says, James, st please stop being rude to your guests. Uh, why have them on if all you want to do is berate them? Uh, Elaine is in Leicestershire. Elaine, good morning. Good morning. Am I rude to everybody? No. no. I'm about to give all of your Republicans a history lesson. Oh, yes, please. In 1760, George II made a deal with the government of the day... Correct. ..that he would, he would surrender the income from his properties and estates and, in return, the government would guarantee him an income. Now, for the last year that figures are available, which is 2022, the Crown Estates made a profit of £442 million. 25% of that was given to the royal family for their, towards their expenses. 75% of that went into the public purse. And that this doesn't even that... take account of the huge amount of tax and other revenue that we receive as a, right. result, of the, right. uh, as, as a result of the visitors who come here, largely because of the, the, uh, the royal history that we have. No, I, I, listen, Lelaine, I think that is a brilliant piece of analysis. Thank you. Well, well, the Crown Estate is administered by the Crown Estate Commission. They are. And when each monarch comes to the throne, they have to surrender their rights. Well, exactly. And, and then, of course, that income comes in. Uh, Elaine, only moving on for time reasons. Why? Because uh, Becky O'Connor from Benjamin B is hanging on there and is ready to chat now. Becky, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, we need to turn our attention to uh, the mortgage deal. So, everybody was celebrating and saying, yes, mortgages, they're getting cheaper, blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. No, it's a bit of a yo-yo situation on mortgage rates because they are increasing again. Um, so, Santander has just put up its rates as of last night and they're back up above 4% for a five-year fix. Um, HSBC is now the only large lender with a deal um, under 4%, 39 Six percent, um, and the average has been going up. So, I mean, it's gone up it's only only slightly, but it's, you know, still it's more expensive. Five point two two percent to five point two eight percent, according to Money Facts, for a five year fix. Um, interest rates are obviously following what's happening with the Bank of England, and expectations that interest rates will come down have 
shifted uh, now from spring to summer, and that's been reflected in the swap rates, which uh, in turn then affect mortgage rates. So um, a reminder that you can lock into rates six months in advance when you need them, and then if rates do come down um, within that period, then you can move to a cheaper deal. That's part of the mortgage charter that the government mm. agreed with lenders some months ago. And I suppose the key um, is shop around, make sure that you uh, look into your own personal finances, but also it is worth reading these slightly longer-term uh, aspects. Goldman Sachs just come out with a report indicating that interest rates will come down, but it may not necessarily be until June, but when they do, uh, expect cheaper mortgage rates perhaps after that. Meanwhile, uh, we've got five ways to get discounts on a council tax. There was Malcolm getting cross about his council tax. How can we reduce it? Well, you do need to meet the criteria, but it's worth knowing the criteria because your circumstances may have changed and you may become eligible for council tax discounts. So um, if you're single, you can get 25% off. If you're a student or you live in an all student household, you don't pay council tax. If you're retired and you get pension credit, then you um, also get reductions. People on low incomes, uh, or those with less than £16,000 in savings um, and other low income households um, receiving benefits. You um, can also get a deferral if you're struggling to pay council tax and you're on a low income and you can challenge your council tax ban. Now I know this is a little difficult because if you challenge your council tax ban it may also go the wrong way and you may end up paying more council well, be, tax. Well be confident you before you do it. Do you do, do your homework. But I suppose, look, if you're living in Birmingham and you're about to face 21% council tax rise, uh, do everything you possibly can to reduce it. Meanwhile, uh, the government's digital skills boot camps, apparently this can help you earn more. How? Look, I actually think these digital skills boot camps sound pretty good. Um, they're free. Um, they're fully funded by the government. They're up to 16 weeks um, in length. Uh, you can do them flexibly, so you can do them around other work. You need to be 19 or over, but the idea is just to fill that gap in tech skills that we have in the UK. We want to be really big in, in tech in the UK, and we need the skills to be able to do that. So um, it's worth looking into if you are interested or you feel that you need um, more skills in cloud computing, cybersecurity, software development or web development. These are all covered by these courses. Um, uh, it sounds pretty good. There's lots of uh, people who've been on them who have subsequently got jobs um, with higher salaries. And the government is saying you um, could increase your earning capacity by up to 55%. Now, that is obviously very dependent on the job. And it's more focused on junior roles. Um, but, yeah, it sounds like a pretty good initiative. Certainly does. Becky O'Connor, Director of Public Affairs at Pension B. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning here on Talk. Much appreciated. Meanwhile, I'll leave you with news from Leslie, who says, James, uh, I think you need a longer show. You're getting increasingly angry, and I think it's because you don't have enough time. And I think that's right, because we're pretty much out of time, other than the fact that JT says the Beatles are overrated rubbish and the new song is also rubbish. Blimey! Alan says, let Kevin know that a broken clock is right twice a day, and it's still correct more times than he is. <laughs> and on that particular piece of excellent knowledge, thank you very much indeed. I will be back tomorrow, I can sense your excitement already, for early breakfast. That starts at five o'clock, so make an appointment to join me tomorrow for early breakfast. Meanwhile, next, it's Talk Today with Jeremy Carl and Rosie Wright. Very good morning, it's just gone six o'clock. I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. The British fish industry has been hit by a perfect storm of problems. First, the pandemic, then Brexit, and now the economic recession. A woman can become a man, and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. David Cameron needs to worry about his own country, and frankly, he can kiss my ass. If Boom, fantastic. We need a bit more of that in the UK. Well, she's saying what a lot of people think. Not if you can't then... call Hamas terrorists, I can't talk to you. Cut the interview. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. No. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of the street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense.
Our only way out of the theater